Hello guys, it's James here. We're back for round four. Let's go. First up, thank you for all the support again. It means a lot. Thank you for the last video, which was freaking huge. Got like almost, I think 300 views and um, a dozen likes. So again, thank you so much. Cause like this, you know, I've been doing this since like eight this morning. It's now like 11 o'clock that I'm recording this. So again, I, I appreciate all the likes, just the comment, just like literally it's crazy how much that like button can just inflate my head and be like, fuck yeah, like let's go. So again, I appreciate it. Simple thing like that uh, goes a long way. And thank you for the guys reaching out in discord as well. Like, cause I, I said before as well, I'm not posting videos on Thursday for the Thursday game. Cause I just don't have time after work. Um, there might be a time later on where I don't have Fridays off. Um, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But for now, I can only just post um, Friday videos. So thank you so much. Thank you for the feedback. It, I, I'm glad you guys are liking the content. So we're just going to go through last week's uh, bets. Um, actually, and before we go through that, it's, it's now April, right? So we're round four. Most of the teams are coming up to their fourth game or, you know, a, a month of footy. Some have played more with the opening round. But I said in the first video, and throughout that once teams start to play about a month of footy you know the four rounds they start to hit, hit their strides some of the form um and the value can you know balance out some players you know like you want to know who's the outlier or if people are keeping their same role what's going on with the teams themselves so yeah now that we're a month into it hopefully things start to pick up because last year um, I was down like a hundred and something bucks. Personally, I'm the same again, but I've bet like $2,000 already this month. Um, and I'm only down a hundred bucks and I've had some fucking close ones, which we're going to get through. So I knew that going in that March is always rough. So, um, if it's been the same for you, um, you know, don't get discouraged because it, it happens to me every year. So hopefully now we start, we start picking up the pace a bit. And that goes in last week's, uh, betting tips and results I showed uh, last week. Fucking rough month, but um, the Geelong Hawthorne game, which I posted on my YouTube comments. So if you don't see a video from me um, for the Thursday games or like the Monday game, I don't know if there's ever going to be another Monday game, but or maybe Anzac weekend coming up. I don't know what the plan is for that. But um, if there's any videos, if there's any games on irregular days, then I will just post the stats in the on my YouTube, on the comments. So yeah, if, if please, if you see that and you find that useful, please like that. Cause like I said, it's crazy how much a, a like or just a well done, thanks mate, just goes a long way. So again, thank you so much. I'm, uh, yeah, anyway, thank you again. Just let, let's keep going. So if we go to last week's games, the Brisbane Collingwood, again, we're just doing a recap now and then we'll go into the other ones. I'm gonna hopefully timestamp these in future. So. That was a nice comment I had, uh, some feedback. If I could just timestamp the videos because it's kind of annoying to have to sieve through and find the game you want. Just say it's Saturday or Sunday. You only want to go see the Sunday games. I'm, I'm going to try and timestamp those from now on. Uh, but this first bit will just be the recap. So it was the Brisbane Collingwood game and I was at this game and again, the second quarter was like the only good thing. Brisbane are very rough. I hope they come back. Um, how cool is my shirt, by the way? Anyway, I like that sort of retro-y... I don't know, type of shirt. Anyway, side note, um, Isaac Quainor, again, I like him. Uh, he missed last week, so I would really recommend him for this week. Um, Paddy Lipinski, again, I, I swear I saw a lot of him and I don't get any reception at the Gabba. So when I'm at the game, I'm doing fucking mental gymnastics in my head, trying to keep count. I mean, I'm not like trying too hard, but I just can't help it. So just in my head, I'm like, yeah, Paddy Lipinski um, has touched this more than 15 times, but um, no. So anyway, from just being at the game, he looked okay. So I would be fine to back him again. Link has been great. I've noticed his odds have been a little bit shortened now. So he's actually shorter than Zach Bailey. So do we go Link or do we go Zach Bailey? Because I like someone who comes off a miss and Lincoln McCarthy has kicked 13. Sorry, he's hit in his last 13 games or something. So same as Bobby Hill. Bobby Hill's been absolutely destroying it. So it kind of sucks when you when you have like the goal score. Like when you have these guys, uh, Link and Bobby Hill, were at like a dollar forty value, and it fucking sucks when the dollar forty value fails. And then Paddy Lipinski was like a dollar fifteen, a dollar eleven. That again, that goes to my whole point where don't have some big leg and then include a dollar ten value or something 
because it's just not worth it. Um, speak. I was going to actually talk about this later, but I might speak about it now. So that's the Brisbane game. Everyone else is still good. Oh, yeah, and Darcy Wilmont's odds have significantly dropped. So he's in like a dollar fourteen. But anyway, it's been great betting on him. I said milk Darcy Wilmont while you can, but he's already too short. So um, anyway, about the extra leg, I, I don't even take my own advice. So this was the Geelong Hawthorne game. I'm just going to jump around a little bit. I had this fucking great bet. So I actually loaded up pretty hard because I was kind of confident. So I put 60 bucks on this. And Mark Blitzavs, who I commented, so I posted this on the uh, on my uh, YouTube thing saying Blitzavs uh, is now like a dollar eleven, a dollar fourteen. He's too short for my liking. Because usually he's like a dollar fifty, which is great, but a dollar fourteen, I'm like, mm, I, I can't do it. Stupidly, I ignored my own advice and then this shit happens. So he got 13 posies, but then like five minutes after the game, it went up to 14. You, you got to be careful of that because sometimes you'll be super happy that your player hits 15 posies and then five minutes later, they'll adjust it like a kick out, have their foot on their line or that there was a handball. They thought it was a handball, but it was a fresh airy. There's all sorts of BS where at the very end of the game, you might not, um, you might not get win your bet, even though it's still fine. Because just give it five, ten minutes after the game finishes, and then that's when they're usually sorted. So anyway, he was on thirteen, and then he went to fourteen, which you know doesn't really help me anyway. But the point is, he was someone who was like a dollar ten to a dollar fifteen, who I added in this already long bet. I didn't need to. It would have reduced the value by like what, probably seventy cents, like less than a dollar. So. I shot myself in the foot there. I didn't take my own advice. So I hope you guys learn that as well. Don't. That's why I try and keep the bets kind of short. But to be fair, this isn't one I posted on YouTube. I recommend things like three to five legs. This was my own little personal interest that... Uh, it was the same thing with Callum Brown when he was playing West Coast um, two weeks ago. He, he was like a dollar oh one to kick a goal and he doesn't. Like there's just... Uh, and then I include it. So it's so dumb. So... Do as I say, not as I do. The rest of them are all pretty good, but um, let's get back on track to North and Carlton um, last week. So, Bailey Scott had a stinker. He's been averaging like 25 posies and he got 15. Again, someone I would like to include this week. Jacob Weedering is great value at the moment, but so is all of Carlton's backline. So, he was fine. I didn't watch these Saturday games because I was out, um, but I saw Luke Davis Uniac was on like six posies or something at or seven at half time i don't know something crazy and i was like nah he's 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 out i come home and i see he's hit his target so that was great darcy tucker very unsure about it at the moment he was great in the back half last year but i said he averaged 18 and a half at marvel and to see him i think he got like 11 i don't know so he's very much out of form but i like the players who miss but i don't like the players who fucking suck so um We'll see. We'll make our mind up when we get to it. Um, who was next? Frio, Adelaide. So, oh, Hinge. Okay, so I'm recording this on Friday. I've seen the Thursday night game. Hinge was great, like 24 posies. He just missed. And I said in my post as well, I really want to back Hinge. And it was the same with Chase Jones. Both of these guys hit after missing their posies the last week. 24 to Hinge and then... It was 15 to Chase Jones, but he was on the bench for like 10, 12 minutes in the last quarter because they couldn't get him on. So he just came on, got a shit kick, and he got his 15. So again, Brayshaw was the same. So he's just missed, but I really back him for 25 again. And if his odds are there, we're going to take him. So again, we love the players who just miss because I like players who are consistent and hit their target. If they miss one, I'm backing them the rest, like the, the other 8 out of 10 games, they're going to hit. I don't want someone who's, you know, going to get, like uh, an example that comes to mind right now, um, looks like Kane Farrell from Port Adelaide. He got like 27, 29 posies one week and then 11 the week after. Like, I, I do not want that. Although I think I actually highlighted him in blue because sometimes the value suades me. But anyway, we'll again, we'll get to the future bets after. Uh, Essendon St. Kilda. Oh, fuck you, Sam Durham. Why'd you get concussed? Uh, is what it is. That would have won if uh, um, Sam Durham didn't get injured. So not much more I can say about that. Um, Dyson Heppel and Andy McGrath, I think I would include them again for this week. They've been looking great. Uh, and Sinclair. But again, I didn't watch... Was this a 
Oh, the other ones were Friday games. That's right. It was Easter Friday. I was out. So I watched, I think, oh, that's right. I watched the second half of this because my friends were chatting, saying Nick Martin's about to break the record. And anyway, that's a that's an interesting uh, story of, you know, 45 cheap or 44 cheap posies. He tied the record, actually. So I watched that half. Um, anyway, I'm a Supercoach fan. So give me all the cheap posies that you can get. Um, Port Melbourne game. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. So Christian Salem I say I like to bet on the players who miss, but there's an exception. If you get no posies in a quarter, how the F can I back you next week? So I gave that warning with Ben Keys for last night's game. So um, with the Adelaide Melbourne game, I said Keys is in the green for money and he's in the green for form, but I don't like a player who can go seven posies one quarter to like one the next. Christian Salem did exactly that he had like zero in the first and then he had one for almost the second and then he got a couple late and then he got five or four but i i don't know if i can trust a player who gets he doesn't touch the footy in 30 minutes like that is insane to me so that is like a big warning i don't care if he just missed and is averaging you know what they need zero positives in a quarter is massive red flags um western bulldogs eagles uh oh this I can all the doggies get the footy right the doggies pretty much had every player but like three get 15 it was like three or four or maybe five but anyway it was pretty much their whole squad had over 15 posies if you bet on anyone from the dogs for 15 posies you were loving it which means on the opposite end west coast didn't fucking touch the footy so tom cole didn't have it but the doggies are really good at getting the footy. And then Bontempelli, who's rested forward for like more than half the game. Ugh, I, fucking Bevo. He kicked three goals and... Uh, but, you know, it's hard like that. And Tom uh, Liberatore got subbed. It's just a hard team to bet on because I don't know with Bevo. He's got the Bevo salad happening. He's just tossing up the team and who knows where the frick they're going to land. So... That was rough, but I'm sure Bontempelli will bounce back. Same with Libba. I'm tempted to include him. Um, Bramble went huge. Um, so, but again, he, he's in hot form. I, I'd rather the people who miss than crazy hot form. It's like stocks. I'd rather, instead of buying high, instead of betting high, I would rather bet on someone low who's going to bounce back. Uh, Jaden Short is actually one of them who got uh, 19. One disposal short. He hasn't been looking great. And actually, I did suss his value. He, I think he's like $1.15. And I wouldn't include that because he's like teetering on 18, 19, 20 Aussies. So, I mean, if he was $1.30, yep, for sure. But he's a bit uh, too short. Uh, <laughs> That's not a pun. Um, he's a bit too short for my liking. But um, Papley is in uh, great form. Bolton kicked a goal, uh, no Dusty. Dusty's back this week, so we'll reassess. And Chad Warner, Sydney just didn't play great at all. So I don't. I think Chad Warner had one ping, and he. I think I said it in the last video, he's going to have a ping from like outside 50. He did, and it was a point. Or it was out in the full. It was something. It was a shit kick. Sydney weren't great that day. So uh, next one. Is this the last one? What are we up to? Oh, this is the... Yeah, okay. This is the... Um, Easter Monday game. So, um, we actually had it all play out, which was good. I was... Oh, that's right. I was just looking at my notes. So, yeah, my note was this bet, which I already talked about. So, Blitzavs actually didn't hit. But from the info that I provided you guys on the Monday, um, everything else was great. So, that one was fine. I just wished I could include that in the video. But I'm more than happy to... For any of those games that just come out way later than my video, I'm happy to repost the odds because it was so outdated. So when I did the video on the Friday, I went back and I was using my video to look at the stats and like who to bet on. I'm like, fuck it. The values for a lot of these people have changed so much. So I was like, let's do a new video. Um, so I've done that one. What's next? Oh, so, all right, let's just go into last night's game. Again, I can't post this on the video, but I posted the stats and Rory Laird missed by one posse and was benched in like the last three minutes or something. So, oh, so unlucky. So unlucky. And again, I I did the extra thing on this. Ed Langdon and Rory Laird both missed by one. That was $30 odds. I had 25 bucks. Like, come on. It's so close. We knocked off 
Jacob Van Ruin and Christian Petrarca, they both missed the goal last week, and I said I recommend them. Everyone else here, I had recommended uh, blue in my XL, in the things I provided, but I say don't bet on everyone blue, just pick a couple, and I don't freaking listen to myself. Oh, well, I did. I had I had this bet as well, so, but, you know, fucking Rory Laird. Um, so, if you were able to pick three to five out of these players, which weren't Rory Laird and Ed Langdon, you would have got up, so... Oh, very unlucky. Um, but yeah, that's the recap from last week. I am just going to move my screen aside, set up my Excel. I should have done this earlier. Um, just give me a second. Um, awesome. Okay. Switch this over. Wait, here we go. So we got the Brisbane North game. Oh, this is actually last night what I posted. Um, yeah, dude, everyone like hit, except Ed Langdon, and he was the one paying a dollar fourteen, dude. That was my exact Blitzarv's mistake. I can't emphasize this enough. Someone in, like in good form who is in the orange or red, like, oh, I, why do I do this? Please learn from my mistakes. Mark Blitzavs was last week, and then I did Ed Langdon last night. I gotta make sure I'm not including any of those guys because it's just. It's not worth it. I would rather like Chase Jones miss, who's a dollar fifty-five. I'd rather, you know, Brody Smith or Christian Petrarca, someone who's at, in the green odds. I hate having a leg lose that is in the orange. I, I never include the red, so that's usually not a problem. I hate including someone in the orange, and that's the leg that fails. It's so, oh, it's so punishing. But anyway, we, we, we live and learn from our mistakes and I just try and pass that on. Here we go. I've included an orange. Speaking of that, Darcy Wilmont, I love you, but dude, I can't have some orange value um, stuff me over. So rip good value. Unlucky for Darcy Wilmont. I said as well, I can't remember if I said this in the start of the video. My mind is like a goldfish. I said we milked Darcy Wilmont from like the back half of last year because he was like a dollar seventy. $1.60, $1.50, he was great odds, like insane odds. And it's crazy to see someone go from that odds to $1.16. And then what will happen? So he's too short for the 15 posi bracket. Maybe in a year or so, he will then become um, value value in the 20 posi bracket. So right now he's at, he's $1.85 in the 20 posi bracket. I, I'm not gonna bet on him at all, but there will be a time where these numbers maybe bump up into five, six, seven. Maybe not for a year or two, um, but there's, it's 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 like the, I don't know, what's the word of it? Like the crossing of the guard or something. He's done in the 15 posi bracket and he's moving on to the 20, but for us as a, you know, punter, borderline irrelevant for us at the moment, even though we've backed him for so long. Um, but who else can we look at in the meantime? Jared Berry is great as long as he's not tagging. This is North Melbourne, so he shouldn't be doing any serious hard tagging or playing a defense. So I like Jared Berry. Oh yeah, and all the games are at Adelaide this week. So none of those stats where it's like, oh, he plays really good at Marvel or at the Gabba. It's like everyone is in neutral territory, except Adelaide and Port. Um, oh, so I like Joe Dad. I, I highlighted him purely because he stunk it up with Darcy Fort in the team because he doesn't get to play in the ruck. It'll be Oscar McInerney and, and Darcy Fort, but with Fort dropped, Danaher's going to have to pinch hit, and he loves to go in the ruck, push out the opponent, grab it, and then swing onto his left and just get a cheap kick. Um, and plus, all he just looked like very uninterested, but so did all the Brisbane forwards, like Charlie and Eric. Oh, it's a whole debacle, but anyway, I like Joe Danaher. I'm probably not going to include him right now. Oh, Darcy Tucker as well. Missed last week. Has been shit, but he's great value. Again, he, he's only missed seven, and out of the one out of the three games he's played this year, he's missed twice. And he's averaging 15. So, like, if I was to include someone, I'd probably include Darcy Tucker, although he's fucked me in the last two times. But a dollar eighty-seven is great value, especially if we're gonna keep this short, right? So we get a bonus bet if one leg fails. Three plus, same game, multi, uh, one refund per day, which is freaking great. So if I was to include Darcy Tucker at dollar eighty-seven, I feel like I don't have to include Danaher or Luke Davis Uniac, like, or you know he's pretty tempting too. A dollar twenty-six, uh, nine games, averaging twenty-eight posies. 
But Zach Fisher is a dollar thirty-five, and he's also averaging three over than what he needs to. Um, Bailey Scott missed last week, and he's averaging twenty-five. That's including his fifteen posies he got. Oof, yeah, so that's tempting. So then, if I was to go Bailey Scott, so that's three legs already at three dollars sixty-five, and I don't want to be too greedy. There's not many lions here at good value. Like all the lions are in red or just not worth it. But if I was to go Zach Fisher and Bailey Scott, that's four legs, $5. We can include that bonus bet from last night. Thanks to Rory Laird. Um, it, it does worry me how when Bailey Scott missed, you know, he misses by five posies. Like my whole issue is players who aren't consistent if they miss by one two or three it's fine but it's when they start to miss by a lot more it's like you know what was the problem um but again that's if i bet that with you know real money i i'm confident barry's gonna hit um fisher um yeah and i'm more confident in those guys like if one fails like i get that refund so that's going to be my bet for tonight but um I might... Oh, we forgot, we forgot to look at goal scorers. Sorry. Uh, Link McCarthy kicked the goal in his last 13 games due to miss. And he's in orange too. So, if I've learned anything from the last couple of games, it's just let's not include any orange unless we absolutely have to. There's, there's others to choose from first before we look at the orange value. And again, I'm just repeating what I say all the time. I'd rather, miss some, uh, I'd rather bet on someone who just missed. Uh, Eddie Ford has been subbed and you know could be subbed could be starting sub but averaging a uh, 1.3 goals he's eight out of his last 10 times a dollar 57 like i would almost rather take bailey scott off or actually if i take um darcy tucker because he is concerning um so who do we have now so we have just jared berry and zach fisher um, Eddie Ford. Dollar fifty-seven. That's three dollars. Let's get fifty bucks back. But again, these actually, this is oh shit! I've done the bet in the wrong order. I would recommend then doing like this bet with your real money because, oh fuck! Uh, I would recommend doing this bet with your real money because I am very confident in Barry and Fisher. I'm not confident in Eddie Ford. So if we were to do this, like I'm still, like I can't lie at the stats. Eddie Ford is very tempting and good value there. So I'm including in my bet, but with the refund that Ladbrokes are offering, if one leg is to fail, like that, that is pretty good. I'm not including a bunch of risky ones. It's one risky. So if one fails, I'm going to get a bonus bet. So I might actually just do it, actual real life bet there. And I might save the bonus for something else. Or we do one without Eddie Ford. Sorry, I'm going to be watching this game, so I don't mind loading up on the the games I'm watching. Um, so, who do we have? Jared Berry. I'm very tempted on Danaher. Very tempted on Danaher. Even though his form is not showing it. But yeah, he plays well without Fort. Usually better at the Gabba, but he had 20 posies uh, against Frio. And was one of the better players. Um, Bailey Scott... I don't want to bet on a bunch of North players as well. Like that's a bit of my bias showing. I might I might reassess that when I get to it. But I don't want to bet on a bunch of North players when I'm watching it. I'm going for Brisbane. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, kick a goal, Eddie Ford. Uh, but you know, that's the only bias coming through. Um, Port Adelaide versus Essendon. Thankfully, there's a couple to bet on here. Essendon have usually been a team that are not good to bet on. Um, some are popping up, which is good. There's actually another game coming up. I can't remember which one that I'm probably going to miss um, for betting wise. So not many good odds, but again, we'll get to it. Oops. Uh, I'm going to look at the goal kickers first because I missed it. Willie Rioli is in orange. Oh, Ivan Soldo, $2.40 for almost averaging a goal a game seven times. Like that, that is fucking huge. Again, this is a perfect opportunity two dollars forty this is perfect opportunity to do your first bet because by the way so if you do your first bet it's 25 dollars as three legs 
and then you do your second bet as three legs and fifty dollars ladbrokes are going to refund you your first bet so if you're doing your first bet make sure it's the, the higher amount make sure it's the one you know that you think out like this where it's mostly solid except for maybe one risky one so i've already got Ivan soldo and then if i was to look at who else i'm confident in ben ben hobbs averaging almost uh, 19 and a half posies nine times a dollar 28 that sounds fantastic and there's no sam durham because he got concussed andy mcgrath has been good but again i'm I'm repeating everything just so it sticks in with you guys as well. Um, and with me, because I'm the one doing these mistakes. I'm going to avoid the orange. I'm going to look at Mason Redman, Dyson Heppel. Both are only average, averaging just over. Been very consistent. If I was to go one or the other, I'd go Dyson Heppel because, you know, uh, 13 cents more. But who have we? Jade Gresham missed last week, had a stinker against his old club. Jaden Laverde la uh, missed by one. And he's $1.70. So if I was to do Ben Hobbs, like Jaden Laverde, Laverde, um, but he's only done six times. It would have been seven if he hit. I'm going to do Dyson Heppel. Yeah, I'm going to do Dyson Heppel. Look at that. $5 for three legs. And if one of those fail, you know, it might be Avan Soldo, but sometimes with Ruckman... Like, I, I obviously like betting on, you know, someone who plays in the forward line. I'm not really a huge fan of betting on midfielders to kick a goal. There's some exceptions, you know, like Petrarca or Warner, Bont, players who will kick a goal, you know, six, seven, eight out of 10 games. The other exception is I do like Ruckman. Like, I, was, I bet on Tim English personally the other day to kick a goal because he'd missed in his last two. Because Ruckman usually have a shot at goal. Ruckman uh, will either have a rest up forward or when someone's got a free kick uh, on the 50, 60, 70 meter line, the Ruckman will go down, present an option. Or even if there's a ball up in the forward 50, a throw in, whatever the heck, sometimes you just need a lucky free kick or the Ruckman to pull it out. There will be a chance. There's What I'm getting at is there's chances there for it to happen. With a forward, there's chances. They're going to mark the ball. The ball is coming in. With a midfielder, sometimes it doesn't feel that much. Like Petrarca and Bont will play forward. They start in the forward line. I don't like a, a midfielder who starts in the CBA or the center and then luck would have it. They crumbed a ball and uh, from a ball up and snapped a goal. I would rather someone who has a, a guaranteed chance of kicking a goal. And I feel like a Ruckman has that chance. Um... So yeah, I'm going to bet uh, $25, maybe real money for that one. You know what? I probably only need to do that. I might have another dabble later because what, what game is this? This game is a... Oh, this is tonight too. I might actually be watching this one. So I might have a, another little cheeky dabble myself. Uh, if I was, maybe let's just go through one more. Heppel. Oh, Butters has been good, but he's in orange. So I would take Connor Rosé. Dude, Butters averaging like 30. Um, 25 is a lot though. But green and green. Oh, I'm not usually a fan of the 25 bracket. Like it's crazy to me that I feel like Soldo, who's just missed their target once more. It's just, it's much better value. That's insane. I'm almost tempted to go Soldo again. $2.40. Oh, that is huge. And who's reversing? Like... Um, Sam Draper and Toddy Goldstein. I might, I'm going to maybe reinvest again off, but if I was, I think I would actually include, include Soldo. No, I'm pretty happy with my current bet. Jaden Laverde, I just, I know he can pump out like eight, eight disposals. But again, there's no Ridley. So do we ride uh, Jaden Laverde? One more week before there's no uh, before Jordan Ridley's back. Again, I, I'm I'm doing all this so you guys can hear my thoughts. So right now we have Heppel, Laverde, Hobbs. There's no Sam Durham, dude, and Avan Soldo. Two dollars forty. That is fucking bonkers. Two dollars forty. Nine dollars fifteen, dude. I'm just tempted to chuck the bonus cash on that. Two hundred bucks. Anyway, again, I might have another little dabble later on, but um, until then. So, 
Let's move on to West Coast versus Sydney. Let's go. Fuck, West Coast are 15 bucks. I feel like <laughs> I never bet on the game. But after last week, how Sydney lost to Richmond, they probably rocked up thinking, oh, this will be a free win. And then lost because they brought like no energy. Um, I feel like Sydney should get a kick up the ass and they will like pump west coast by 100 points but that's my guess but again i i don't bet on the game because my guesses on the game are usually not correct the players i'm much much better at so fuck look at all the sydney players to get okay and here's a little fun uh, uh fun fact again i'm pretty sure i brought this up before where the fuck to go oh here we go so last week when doggies versed adelaide look at this by disposals Everyone but one, two, three, four, five. Four if you you take the sub off. Everyone but four players didn't get 15 posies. There's two things with that. Bulldogs get a lot of the footy. They just get so much footy. They chip it around in the back line. They always do handball receives from a mark. They get so much freaking footy. West Coast don't get any footy. Look, only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of their players got over 15. That is fucking insane. That is insane. So, hence you can see why there's so many Sydney players here in the 15 posse bracket up first, and then all the West Coast players start to come down. So, if we're looking at that, um, Ollie Florent and James Rowbottom, although I believe they're going to hit it, we're going to look at uh, value elsewhere first. Tom Papley's been in great form, $1.24. Surely he's probably going to kick like three goals. Um, but at $1.24, fuck, that is good. Tom Cole missed last week. I am a big fan. I'm just worried that Sydney are going to pump the living shit out of West Coast. And he's going to do the same what happened to Bulldogs where he's not going to touch it. That is my only concern because I was watching that game. And it was just... Yeah, after that first quarter, you know, West Coast are just lost. Like, why bother even showing up? Jaden Hunt, though, playing in the back line, getting some kickouts. I would prefer to go Hunt over Tom Cole, even though they're both uh, on eight. I would rather go Jaden Hunt. Um, Liam Duggan, he's averaging four over what he needs to at $1.20. Justin McInerney, $1.58 for averaging... Oh, he's, so he's averaging just under. But again, do I have that sheet still open? Yeah, this is what I use to get this uh, set up. If I go to look at... So again, this is my thing I do to set this up in the first place. I look at the 15, 20, 25. I have 30 there, but I never look at it. I don't... One, one two players a game might get over 30. I'd rather... There's no point. Um, so let's unhide the rest of the columns and go to Sydney. Maybe see... Oh, it's near the bottom. Uh, what's his name? Justin McInerney. McInerney? I don't know. 20... He's averaging... Oh, look at his last... So his last four games, he's hit over 20. And he's averaging 19.2 because he's had a 12 in there and a 15. I mean, one out of seven times, he's getting over it for $1.58. If that is our third leg, I would rather take that. I would rather, If that's our risky leg for a possible bonus bet, I would rather take that. What was he under? 20 disposals. Justin McInerney. Oh, still not even great. How the fuck did that only go to $2.80? Uh, $2.90. Oh, can I get the three bucks? That's such a shit bet to win $50, $50. But if I was to include one more. James Jordan. Like, he is a little bit more value than Robottom and Florent. And I believe Sydney will get a lot of the footy. So my thinking is James Jordan. Will Hayward missed last week and he's averaging over a, a goal a game. And like I said before, surely an absolute avalanche of goals against West Coast, especially after they thought they'd get... The oh, yeah, sorry. I write little notes. So um, when I do this, I write notes just in case I do forget or whatever. But I can usually just chat for hours. So if I was to include either Will Haywood at a dollar twenty-eight or James Jordan at a dollar twenty-two, Taylor Adams is back. Whether that affects Jordan, I don't know. But there will be goals. 
and I think I would rather go Will Haywood, who missed last week, than James Jordan, who I'm uncertain about. There's another player coming in. Even though Sydney get a lot of the footy. Uh, Will Haywood, $1.28. $3.70. That'll probably get to just under $4 with the odds boost. Eh, again, not amazing, but I don't want to be greedy, especially when we're like barely positive at the moment, so... I kind of don't want to be too greedy. Especially uh, with all the bets that are just missing. We'll keep it to that. Um, next game after... Um, we, uh, we have... Sorry. I was looking at my other screen. Uh, Frio Carlton. So let's go back. Frio Carlton. Let's see who we have here in the same game multi. Um... Let's go straight. We'll go to 15. Pos oh, yeah. So, when I was sorting this one out, look how many of the Carlton players are in the green uh, who I've highlighted. Zach Williams, Mitch McGovern, Jacob Wiedering, Nick Newman. Like, all Carlton's backline is in blue. I'd only pick two. Zach Williams is averaging like 21 posies and he's $1.24 for 15. That is purely why I'm going him. Even though Mitch McGovern has been great, like he's averaging two more posies than him. Um, Nick Newman has also been... Oh, he's averaging like almost six more than what he has to hit. And he's $1.24. Luke Ryan, again, he was great for the first month, but he's too short now, so... Blake Akers, $1.38. Oh, and Brayshaw missed last week, so I'm including him. Uh, $1.30, great. So we have Williams, Brayshaw, Brody Kemp. When he misses, he uh, usually only one or two disposals away. He's always close. Mm. Which was the one who came from Gold Coast? Was it Elijah Holland? Um, I, I might have to do a little bit more just to see who I include there. But if I was to include one of those guys there... Brody Camp, if, um, uh, $1.72. And do we include Mitch? So we have, or well, Blake Akers. Um, Blake Akers on the wing, and he, uh, he didn't miss last week, I don't think, but he missed the week before. What about goal kickers? Michael Frederick, averaging 1.3 goals a game. He's been hitting quite a bit. Um, damn, I've missed a couple. Luke Jackson at Matty Cottrell missed last week. Mm. Frick. Sorry, again, I don't, I don't mean to take too much time trying to sort this out, but some of those are very tempting. Because again, I like shorter legs with great values. So if I was to include Matty Cottrell, six dollars. Uh. Jeez Louise. Four legs. That is pretty good. Again, we're not going to include anything else more risky. But he did miss last week. Corey Durden. Eight out of ten. Averaging over a goal. He's a dollar fifty-three. But Matt uh, again, missing last week just screams to me. I it's something about it. I just We're gonna do that. 150 bucks, good number two. There's a lot there to pick from. So again, I don't mind if you guys swap out Cottrell for Durden or Frederick. Matty Owies used to be much better value, but $1.20 is teetering. Like he's one cent away from being that yuck orange category. So there's a couple of good options here as well. Or if you prefer Mitch McGovern over Zach Williams, um, feel free to take those ones. But I feel like there's a... There's a couple of good ones there to pick from. Uh, Bulldogs Geelong. All right, so this is the last of the Saturday games. Um, scroll down. Bulldogs versus Geelong. Couple to choose from here. Good, good, good. Wait, what the fuck? Where's the 15 posse bracket? Oh shit. Okay, this might be another sports bet stuff up thing. Or lads broke. Lad, lad brokes. This hap This happens sometimes where. I can't, like, I obviously got the info from here, so 
unsure why it's taken out. If I was to go back, 215 markets, so do these. Or why, we might come back to that one at the end of stream. Oh, sorry, uh, the video. Because I actually can't bet on that one. It goes straight from 20, 25, 30, 35. Oh. If I, even if I go back into it, Australian rules, AFL, these are all the games for the week. Bulldogs versus Geelong, same game multi. Nah, no 15 posies, what the frick? Okay, well, if I was doing it, I'll still give you my tips anyway. That sucks. Um, yeah, there's a bunch here to pick from. Zach Tui, who was rested last week, but already. So I'm kind of retracting these blues again, because from what I've said. So I would pick, yeah, dude, Mark Blitzab's miss last week. Although he cost me like 500 bucks, dude, I would fucking pick him again. Uh, Mark O'Connor, I'm noting for good value, probably not going to hit, but at $1.83, you're not going to beat that um, Ivan Soldo deal. $2.40. I Just watch, bet on him after you see this video and just watch his odds go down. Sure, like, what the fuck? That's crazy. Um, he, he probably, he might not even hit, but oh, that's crazy value. You could even just bet on him without a multi. Just bet on him just... Anyway. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to remove Bailey Dale. Same deal in the orange. Mitch Duncan. It's fine. As soon as I back him, he's probably going to do a hammy or he's going to be out or he's going to be subbed, whatever the heck. But he's been great of late. So don't blame if you include Mitch. So I'd probably go um, Guthrie and Blitzavs. Uh, Duncan. And either Libba or Bont, who both missed. Libba got subbed. Bont was rested in the forward line. Surely neither of those happen again. You know, Libba, just maybe that slight better value. But I also have a bet on Bont for the Brown though. So I just want to see Bont do good. Um, Tyson Stengel as well. He's just like one cent away from orange value. So if you want to have another bet on him. Brad Close. I don't know. Yeah. Every game I've watched, he's kicked one. So, go for it. The option's there. I probably wouldn't include a goal kicker from this. Um, if I had to, I think I would still go Tyson Stengel. But, I think I would do... Oh, it's it's hard. Bont or Libba. And now that Jackson McRae's back, like, what? why... Um... Uh, no, that's not a why. Why is Jackson McRae back? He's a great footy player, but as soon as he's back, why is Bont full forward like the whole game? Then why is Liver subbed? Well, to be fair, they were reversing West Coast, so I, I can see why. It's just annoying from a punting point of view, you know what I mean? So I would go one of those guys. I'm just going to have one last refresh to see if the 15 thing pops up. I have a feeling it won't. Yep. Okay, so we're going to have to skip that game. I hope it's not the same. That's a Saturday game and it's doing that. I'm just going to open the Frio Carlton game and see if it's. No, 15 positives is there. Bulldogs versus Geelong. God damn it. Uh, okay, well, let's move on to the next one. I can't bet on that one at the moment, but there is the info, just so you guys can see 15 and the 20, and then the 25 and the goals. So, hopefully, it's not the case with the Gold Coast GWS game. Oh, the Sunday games, they always have good value until like the day of watch all these players and their odds change but for the meantime um yeah rory atkins first came back i've highlighted but he could be subbed he could be 20 like that screams guarantee nine out of ten averaging 20 he's av he's averaging eight more than what he needs to get a dollar 20 but i don't know i don't know what will happen with him Connor Iden has been fucking fantastic. So I would include him without a second thought. Toby Green. Again, sometimes it's interesting to include the forwards because they can actually still get a bit of the footy. And $1.64, green and green. Like, I think I have to do that too. Oh, there's a bunch still. Will Powell and Lockie Ash. Lockie Ash had a fucking stinker against West Coast and got subbed. Like... Surely that doesn't happen again. But Will Powell has been in great form to start the year. Like, what, what has he been averaging his first uh, three games? Um, if I was to go to Gold Coast, GC. 
Willpower of 20, 21, 28. Oh, he's lost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games have been over. But Lockie Ash missed. And boy, I prefer someone who just missed. But Lockie Ash got like eight posies and subbed or something. Lockie Ash, six. Oh, and he got a 19 the week before that. Ugh. That is pretty rough. Oh. So I'm fighting myself right now. Do I go the player who missed and got subbed or do I go the player in good form? That is literally... Watch me include Will Powell and then Lockie Ash is going to get it and Will Powell is going to miss. Oh, remember this one. We're going to remember this for next week and we're going to see... Because I'm... It's hard, right? It's, 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 it's like, you know, if you <laughs> buy stocks. I said it before, but it's like, it's so hard to buy something when it's shit and it's like, you know... You'd rather back something with good someone with good form. It just makes sense. Someone's playing well, you want to bet on them. When someone's playing shit, you don't want to bet on them. But it's usually the case more often than not. Someone who's averaging well, after a shit game, they will come back. Like that six, when you got six and got subbed off, I include the sub scores because I, I want to... I include their shit sub scores because I want that to reflect their average and if they hit their target. Because... If you bet on Lockie Ash and he gets subbed, he doesn't hit his target. You don't get refunded. So I'm going to include that here. That is a tough one. Oh, I, I, I've been preaching this to back someone who missed. I'm going Lockie Ash. I would rather fall on my sword. Fucking hell. Rory Atkins, $2. Could be subbed, subbed off. Oh, all right. We have three already. Who do we include? Connor Iden, Toby Green. Lucky Ash, Sam Flanders or Cogs. We've included pretty much all GWS for the moment. So our last one could be Sam Flanders, who's everywhere on the ball at the moment. Oh, and Callum Brown. Okay, this might be our biggest leg. Callum Brown, who had a fucking stinker. I'm sure he kicks a goal. Had a disgusting game against West Coast. Looked like he never had played a game of footy in his life. <laughs> Yeah, it was funny. So I'm, I do super coach draft and we only have two players on the bench because it stops people from hoarding players and it forces people to trade, which is really good. And I like it. So I had like Jordan Ridley and Sam Walsh on my bench who I'm waiting for to play. And I had, um, uh, what's his name? I had, uh, I had someone else who wasn't playing. I can't remember who off the top of my head. And I traded them last minute to get Callum Brown because even though I was two players down, I could still get the win. I traded him Callum Brown and he gets a fucking 16. Oh, he gets a 12. That is the worst game. I've, literally, worst game I've ever seen. Callum Brown. But I, I, back, I back a turnaround. Long story short, I back a turnaround. So $7 odds with that odds boost. Let's freaking go. If I was to do it again, I would take out Callum Brown. Oops, reuse. Callum Brown, Lockie Ash, $3. That's not even bad, just those. That's not even bad. Um, but how many more games? We've got two more to go. So we have 50 bucks. We use that last 50 bucks on the last two games. I'm just going to check this one again to see if it pops up. No. Okay. Richmond versus St. Kilda. Everyone else has the 15 posse bracket. Oh, shit. Nothing good here. I'm going to wait closer to the game. Yeah, this game sucks. The only player I've highlighted is Toby Nankervis. Nah. Nope, nope, nope. None of these look good. <sighs> Wangani Malira, $1.10 is great. Dustin Martin missed last game and he, he didn't play last game. And he got like 16 posies in the game he did play. I don't know. I mean, I would include Dusty, but I mean, that's kind of it. Rowan Marshall is averaging 22. <clears throat> Maybe. Dude, I don't even like these players I'm highlighting. I'm letting you know that, but... Jaden Short, who just missed. I do like someone who just missed, but... I don't... I don't want to... I don't want someone to lose at $1.17. No good value. 
That is a shocking game. Look, I don't even like Toby Nankervis, although he did miss last week, so he he's averaging more. Rowan Ma I don't... How the frick... So I wouldn't include Dusty Martin because, you know, I just, the uncertainty, you could just sit up forward line all game. How are the people... The only people I've highlighted are both Ruckman. That is disgusting. If you can find value there, go for it, but I think the odds might change closer to the game. That is shocking. Here we go. Collingwood versus Hawthorne. Sorry, I couldn't provide any anything there for that game. That just flat out sucks. Oh, I hate not betting on a game. But that is awful. All right, next one. Last one, actually. Collingwood versus Hawthorne. Um, there's plenty here to choose from. Dude, look at all the Hawthorne there. You, you can't have them all, but I don't know if anyone... Sometimes, I don't know if you guys watch... I probably only get to watch like three, four games a week just because, you know, my partner has zero interest in footy and it's kind of unfair if I get to... If I make her watch all these games. But I was watching the, the Geelong Hawthorne game with the lightning warning and the rain and shit. Connor McDonald had me freaking worried. He was on like four or five or six. He was very low at halftime. And he was at 10, I think, in the third quarter at the start of the last and he came out and did very well i was very worried but he was great um and you just can't include all these players so weddle was great blake hardwick did miss but then he was yeah he was thrown forward um dylan moore was good too i'm gonna back Connor mcdonald again just because he oh quaino absolute lock quaino yeah he missed last week um Blake Hardwick. If I see a defender like that thrown forward, what, what I forward players never get posies. Like, yeah, there might be some exceptions. Like, but you, well, <laughs> Connor McDonald is, plays forward and he still gets posies. But players who play in the forward line get like the least amount of footy. Um. So Quainor McDonald. Actually, uh, I do like Weddle and Ward, but Ward is averaging an extra posy more than Weddle. So that's why I would go Ward. Carl Amon missed by uh, by one last week, and he's averaging twenty five. Pendlebury very reliable. Crisp as well missed last week, but he was the starting sub. So that six isn't as bad as it looks, and he has had a, and he's he has had a rough start to the year, but so has all of Collingwood. So would I include him? Like yes, but maybe just for this bet that I have at the moment. Oh, I don't want to have all Hawthorne players. So I have, oh no, I have Quainor, Ward, McDonald. Dylan Moore is averaging 20. Oh, sorry, I'm just having second thoughts. Like Jarman Impey, and averaging, I'm just thinking I include Jarman Impey instead of Connor McDonald, just for two cents less. Hmm. All right, how much did that change? $2.89, two, yeah. I mean, that's not bad. He's averaging a disposal more. And Connor McDonald did have me worried a bit last week. I'm not going to lie. And they're versing Collingwood. Um, oh, yeah. I probably wouldn't want someone in the forward. Anyway. Uh, okay. So, where are we up to? We've included three. Sicily missed last week. Averaging 23. I'm back Sicily again. James Warple had a... Fucking blinder. Had a great game. Dylan Moore missed last week. Uh, he... <sighs> okay, I might not include just Dylan Moore for the moment. Bobby Hill is good, but is in orange, so let's take him out. Pendlebury. Maybe we include include Pendlebury. Five dollars twenty-five. Oh, what the fuck? What are these bets? Wait, let me just clear this whole thing. Shit. Uh, Pendlebury. Um, MP. Ward. Quainor. Who am I missing? Uh, oh, Pendle? No. Sicily. There we go. 525. To win 100 bucks. Okay, great. So we have 25 bucks left over to do for the... 
Geelong Bulldogs game, but oh, that's why I, I'm just, I was just thinking, why am I $25 short? I haven't bet on two games, but because there's nine games this week. Because I usually deposit 200 bucks. Um, but, and then I, I deposit more later on. But yeah, we can't get this game to bet on. So we still have the Geelong Western Bulldogs game to do. And the Richmond St. Kilda game looks disgusting. So I would leave that one. But yeah, essentially, that's all the bets for this week. Um, look, I hope we can start to hit a bit more of our stride now that the the first month of footy has passed us. So it'll hopefully be looking much better. I'm going to be very interested in the Brisbane North game tonight. And then I'll probably watch the uh, Carlton Frio game. No, what was the other one? That was not tonight. Port Essendon. Yeah, I don't know. Those nights, like... My partner is out tonight. She's catching up with friends. Those nights where she is out and I have the night to myself, I am just going to sit back and watch as much footy as I can. I probably have like five bets on each game. So we'll see. I don't want to get too greedy. And I I advise that you guys don't too because, you know, learn from my mistakes. Um, but yeah, anyway, enjoy. Again, thank you so much for the, the positive comments, just the thanks, the thumbs up. I said at the start of the video, but it genuinely does mean so much. Because like, like I don't want to be like, oh, poor little old me. By the time I start this from like this morning to now, it's been like four and a half hours. So, I mean, it, it does mean a lot that I can get a little thank you or a pat on the back or a like. Or, yeah, it, it does mean a lot. So, if you made it to this point in the video, it means so much. And again, I will um, keep you updated throughout the week. I will post the Thursday games on youtube and we're gonna have the videos on friday and until then enjoy the week i hope we go positive um and yeah see you next week peace